All right, 2.7, the task. Uh, we are going to begin to looking at how to factor numbers dealing with positive and negative values. They begin by giving us a, a, an idea of how to, well, they show those models, and they want us to expand on the models. So the first model, it says, I'm going to do nothing to one side. It's, it's the original side. The other side, I'm going to add 2, 2. Okay, so that's pretty basic. So x plus x times x plus 2, represented in a couple of different ways. The area is x times x plus 2, no problem. The other way I can express this is x squared. I have my original x squared, and I have two x's. So that's the second way. Let you know a little secret. If you take the second equation and factor out the greatest common factor, you end up with what you started. The second equation it talks about is, I'm going to do nothing to one side, but I'm going to do two less to the other. So the first side, I'm going to do nothing. The second side, I'm going to do two less. Well, two less would indicate that I take away from or take away from the inside. Now the book, the book, if we're to actually physically see the book, the book would want us to shade everything, just kind of like this. That gets a bit complicated because we cannot see, actually see how many X's we have. So what I like to do is I like to just keep it simple and say one side is X. The other side that we subtract two from, we're just going to go ahead and cross these off this way. That indicates my shading. It keeps it simple plus it allows me to see how many X's I have. So now I represent it in one way as X times X minus two. Again, as a product. And now the other way is x squared, but what did I do with these two x's? The, again, the hashes or slashes indicate I subtracted them. So I actually end up with less than what I started, which kind of makes sense because I took two away from one side and didn't take away anything from the other. All right, well, what if we go on to number three? Number three, if you look at that question, number three says, hey, um, what if I take one away from one side, but I add two to the other? Okay, so take a second and draw your original square. Pause the video and see if you can draw that. One less on one side, two more on the other. Now if you notice, if you didn't pause it and you took note of this, I extended both sides. One on one side, two on the other. Well, what's different about that? Well, what I'm going to do though, on the side that was one less, I'm actually going to cross those out. So now I end up with x plus 2 and x minus 1. So writing the area as a product is x plus 2 and x minus 1. Writing it in standard form, I have my original x squared, and this is where you have to stop and think. I have two x's on one side, and I have one that I'm taking away on the other. So how I kind of explain this is I have two x's on one side, and I have one that I'm taking away on the other. Well, you cross out x for x. I'm going to cross out one I added, one I took away. One I added, one I took away. Well, gee, how much am I left when I do that? I'm, I'm left with one x. So this becomes plus x, but then what about these single unit squares? They're crossed out, so it's minus two. Think about when you multiply. You multiply those last two terms right here. Positive two times a negative one is negative two. Number four, you have two less on one side and you have three more on the other. All right, so two less on one side, three more on the other. Well, what's going to happen there? I'm going to have two less on one side. Okay, so two less on one side. You, you cancel out everything, all right, on the one side, because negatives rule. So x minus 2, x plus 3. Well, gee, as a product, I get x plus 3 times x minus 2. And the other version of that is 1x squared. And again, think, 
I have three X's here. I have two that I'm subtracting. So if I have three, it's like this. I have $3 and I spend two. I'm left with one. And then, again, focus on this here. I have minus six X's. So now I continue. All right, well, what about question five? And I actually, I need to put in question number four in there because I'm going to explain something in a second. So what about this one? Well, five, it says three less than. Okay, so three less than. One, two, three is my less. Two is my more, so complete my diagram. But cancel out the three less side. And x minus three, x plus two. Okay, so x plus two, x minus three, but now, what about my standard form? 1x squared. Again, I have 3 that I'm taking away, 2 that I'm adding. If I owe somebody 3 bucks and I give them $2, how much money do I owe them? I only owe them a dollar, so I owe them. I owe them. That means I'm still in the negative, so I still owe a dollar. And down here, I have minus 6 units. So what's the difference between these two? Gee, the plus x and the minus x, Mr. Wilson. Well, yeah, why is that? Well, look over here in 4. I have more positive x's than I have negatives. In 5, I have more negatives than positives. I had more positives, the middle term is positive. I had more negatives, the middle term is negative. So now when we look at 6 and 7, we should be able to wrap this up real quick. I have 3 more on one side. So I dare you, pause it and draw that. One, two, three. I have four less on the other. Draw that, draw what it looks like. I'll give you a second to pause. Four less, cross out the less. X squared, four less, and I have more negatives than positives, so minus X minus 12, or x plus 3, x minus 4, There's a, there it is as a product, okay, right there. Now, what does 7 say? 7 says 3 less and 4 more. How is that different from 6? Maybe you can't see 7. How is, how is that different, right? If I'm looking at that, how is it different? Three, this is three more than, four less than. I have more less than, I, than I'm taking away. I'm, I have more than I, yeah, spit it out, Mr. Wilson. I have more negatives than positives. Over here, I have more positives than negatives. So how would that look? I'm gonna have my original x squared when I'm done. How many more positives do I have? I have one more positive. But I still have, because it says 3 less than, 4 times 3 is 12, I'm still going to end up with a negative, because a positive times a negative is negative. Here is the area expression for this model. I haven't even drawn it yet. Okay? Now the last thing. What if I add the same amount and take the same amount away from both sides? So what if I add 2 and what if I subtract 2? The question that they pose is, do I end up with x squared? I mean, do I start back with what I, do I end, start, end up with what I started with? I mean, think about it. Well, let's see. Let's prove that this is true or not true. I say x minus 2 on this side, and I say x plus 2 on this side. Well, am I adding, I, I have two positives and two negatives. So am I adding more than I'm subtracting? I'm not. I'm not adding more than I'm subtracting. So this middle term ends up becoming zero. I have an x squared. The middle term cancels out. And what's left? Well, again, focus on this right here. I end up with minus four. So as an area, 
I actually end up with less. If I look at this as a diagram, they've essentially cut this little corner off right here. That's essentially what happens. It's less than what I started with. Remember I started with a x by x square. Well, I added two to one side. I took away two from the other. These little squares get taken away. All right, we'll finish up the rest later.